Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention in the lower field to what I would call the world's most classically normal lymph node. And while it's focusing, even at this power, you could see that the cortex of the lymph node chiefly contains secondary follicles in which you have germinal centers which are lighter on the inside and the mantle zone uh, on the outside uh, of lymphocytes which are uh, darker. And the reason why they're darker is very simple for a bunch of reasons. The lymphocytes on the inside have uh, more cytoplasm relative to their nucleus. Also notice extremely uh, carefully that these follicles are of various sizes and shapes but the m thing you must notice the most is that they are limited to the cortex. The medulla of the lymph nodes contains these lymphocytic cords and these medullary sinuses which is are, are the lighter areas in between. That's why this is called the world's most classically normal lymph node. And uh, once again, notice in the cortex, you have the follicles. In the medulla, you have the cords and sinuses. This is a normal lymph node. Memorize it forever. Look at the lymph node on top. The first thing you notice is that there seems to be a larger and more follicles towards the cortex than you normally see to the point where perhaps this medullary cords and sinuses are relatively compromised. So in all honesty, the main thing you see here is that you have more and bigger follicles and therefore relatively less uh, cords and sinuses in the medulla. This is the classical lymph node pattern of hyperplasia often in reaction to inflammatory stimuli coming into that lymph node. This is normal, benign, uh, follicular hyperplasia of a lymph node, which is one of the two kinds of lymph adenitis. Let's take a look at it all by itself, hopefully. Again, you could see the fat surrounding the lymph node. But notice that the uh, lymph node still has a capsule. It still has a subcapsular sinus. And it still has generally follicles towards the cortex and medullas towards the uh, medulla in the center. But there are more and bigger follicles here reacting to some type of inflammatory stimuli, nonspecifically than in a normal lymph node. The other common type of thing maybe we'll see, but uh, if this is the first classical pattern of lymphadenitis, uh, follicular hyperplasia, the second type could be called sinus histiocytosis, in the old days called reticular hyperplasia, because in the sinuses, which you see here, the lighter areas, these become more prominent in another type of lymphadenitis. But if you're to ask some old-time pathologists what are the two classical patterns of lymphadenitis or lymph node benign hyperplasia secondary to inflammatory stimuli, they would say follicular hyperplasia and sinus histiocytosis. The main thing to notice is that even though the fact that you have both kinds of cells here or structures, the follicles and the sinuses, you know that can't be a lymphoma because the architecture is preserved. If, however, uh, no, these were gone and you had nothing but bizarre follicles, you might entertain the diagnosis of a follicular lymphoma, but we don't have one here. Another feature that makes this really, imp another really important diagnostic feature that makes this lymph node benign is the fact that underneath the capsule, even though it's filled with histiocytes or macrophages, you can still see there is a subcapsular sinus. That's critically important too. I talk too much and I'm sorry because uh, I get excited over lymph nodes like most pathologists do. 
This is acute lymphadenitis, follicular hyperplasia variant. 